southern steam trains in Sussex, as brilliantly recreated by the famous Bluebell Railway. Welcome to Online Video's second Bluebell film. In this recording we take a look at a year on the Bluebell and report on major events that took place. 1618, built at Brighton Loco Works in 1928, spent most of its life in the Guildford area. It was sent to Barry Island for scrapping in 1964, but after a short spell on the Kent and East Sussex Railway, it came here in 1977. We move off the line now and go to what we hope one day will be the northern terminus of the Bluebell, East Grinstead Station. One of the last diesel-electric trains arrives at a cheerfully decorated platform. Next week, the electric service will start. The last of the wiring is underway and East Grinstead Station is preparing for a ceremony very much connected with the Bluebell. British Rail have reserved a bay platform here and relevant track space for the arrival one day of steam trains. Today this gleaming electro diesel class 73 will be named after the Bluebell. Among the celebrities here today, Johnny Morris, the Vice President. So, with a selection of noises off and stiff upper lips all round, the ceremony began. First of all, it's nearly 30 years ago since British Rail actually closed this line uh, beyond um, East Princeton. And the line was taken over in part uh, by the Bluebell Railway, who've been operating very successfully uh, between um, Sheffield Park and Horsted King. Uh, looking forward to having them, and in fact the layout of the railway here, um, as part of the electrification, we have left the Roman space for the Bluebell Railway Station. Now it was time for the unveiling. Johnny Morris steps forward. With an electric train arriving, we move on to the next weekend with BR's Electrification Gala.
There was a strong bluebell presence in the car park and vintage buses were laid on for trips to the railway. Bluebell's vintage weekend. The popular terriers are hard at work as usual, and most of the other tank engines were in use too. Ketchy's bridge, unused for many years, was proving costly to maintain, so it was decided to demolish it with the help of the army. The job had to be done without disturbing normal traffic. On a wet day, a crowd gathered to see the explosion. But first, the bridge had to have plastic explosives packed into holes drilled into the crumbling brickwork.
At a given word, everyone had to retire to a safe distance. The lady captain of the brigade said that she'd never blown up a bridge before and was looking forward to it. The debris was soon cleared away and the track declared safe to use. The great storm of October the 16th had trees uprooted all over the southern counties. The Bluebell Railway didn't escape trouble either. Many people connected with the railway managed to get through the blocked lanes to the line and spent the Saturday clearing the track. No trains ran that day, but on the Sunday, a limited service did run. Due to the complete failure of the electricity supply, all the signalling was dead, so trains had to be hand-signalled. Meanwhile, the complete overhaul of the bullied Q1 was progressing. The engine was dismantled a year ago with the help of the steam crane. It's a dirty, difficult job unscrewing rusty bolts after years of neglect. The work is done out in the open in the yard at Sheffield Park all the year round and in all weathers. A small team of dedicated members, apart from their other duties, work on the project when the weather allows. Ian Collins, one of the regulars, told us about the progress so far. Well, since it's uh, been lifted off the wheels, it's been needle gunned on the outside and inside and underneath the foot plate. It still needs a cylinder block needle gunning, which will be done next time we get some good weather. Well, that's a, a method of removing rust and scale and rubbish. It's by using compressed air, which forces needles onto the metalwork very fast. Um, mm -hmm. Axle boxes are out and in the workshop, biting attention for remetalling. The reverse has been taken off, that requires attention. The motion's all been taken out for uh, rebushing, I think. The sidebars are going to be remetalled, they've come out. Wheels are going away to Swindon for turning. Um, I started work on the tender, and nothing special's happening to that apart from repainting general tidying up 
I am now cleaning out the drag box of the engine. This is underneath the foot plate and takes the weight of the train and the tender. And I'm painting it with bitumen, which is like a thick tar sort of stuff. Just general preservative. General preservative, yeah. We should pause a while to appreciate these members and the hard work they put in to restoring old engines, enabling us to enjoy the scenes and sounds of steam locomotives. Months later and fittings are being bolted onto the main frame. Autumn leaves lead to midwinter and at Horsted work still goes on. The civil engineering department started a very big job. For a long time now the track bed by the platforms suffered from flooding was decided that this was caused by the old drains under the track collapsing. So in December, and without disrupting traffic, the track would be lifted, ballast removed, and new drains laid underneath. Meanwhile, trains came and went, keeping up the well-known Bluebell winter service. Pullman car number 64 recently arrived on the railway was quickly painted up so that it could be used on a Bluebell Cutler near a Christmas. All through the winter months a warm welcome awaits the visitor. The last train of the day has just arrived and is going to be part of tonight's Cutler service when the North London tank arrives to shunt the coaches. Santa looks as though he's checked out the sherries already. There's something romantic about a steam train at night, even if it is only the North London tank. Chefs have been busy all day and it's time to load up the food into the kitchen car and generally get the train ready for tonight's cutler.
At Horsted, a warm Christmassy welcome awaits the train and its guests. The Bluebell's version of the Queen Vic is one of the attractions. Next day, Santa is still very much in demand. A few weeks later at Halsted, the civil engineer has quite a few members working on the drains. A huge new main drain pipe now has to be installed at the edge of the site. The branch line to Ardingly, or what's left of it, is now just a storage siding. It's difficult to remember that this track was electrified and ran to Haywards Heath. Going back to 1960, a film by Trevor White shows the Bluebell looking very different to today. A preservation society had been formed by then and the line had been closed for a few months apart from the Ardingly branch. Members were being recruited and plans were being made to lease the Horsted to Sheffield Park section. Mr Horace May and Captain Manistee attend to details and is that an electric train pulling in behind them? As is well known, the society was successful and the Bluebell Railway came into being. Great numbers of youngsters came down to the line and got to work. Now it's the great day and the first Bluebell train would arrive on the line. It was to arrive on the Ardingly track, which still had the third electric rail in place. It's May the 17th, 1960, and Stepney has arrived to meet the press and well-wishers. A public service commenced in August that year, running from Sheffield Park to a point just outside Horsted Station because of the electric rails. However, the following year, the trains ran right into the station. So now it's a run down the line to Sheffield Park. Note the open signal frames on the platform. 
The years roll by and other locos appear on the line. The diminutive P-Class, there were two in service then. The USA tank was about two helping on the heavier trains. C and H class locos depart for Sheffield Park. Also seen that year, the Q1 and Blackmore Vale. But the highlight of the day was the replica of Rocket, which was off to give rides at Horsted. Visiting locos on display and the sea will be in service next. Being fairly near to London, the railway is very handy for film and television companies. Many feature films have been made on the line and hundreds of commercials too. Meanwhile, the rest of the line lies derelict and empty. Here at West Hoathly, the station disappeared many years ago. The tunnel, though, is still maintained by BR. The great extension plan is on, while negotiations continue for buying back trackbed, which is now in private hands. Nearby, a bridge will have to be replaced. Girders for it have arrived and wait at Horsted. A special train was formed in March to convey guests to an important event at Horsted.
Secretary of State Paul Channon MP arrives to join the train. Among other guests, Chris Green, Director, Network South East. <laughs> North of Horsted, a huge crowd gathers to witness an historical event, the laying of the first piece of track on the Northern Extension. Mr. Channon at the controls of the crane carefully lowers the panel of track. The youngest member and the oldest tighten up symbolic fish plates. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great pleasure to me to come here today and to have the honour of carrying out the ceremonial inauguration of the Bluebell Railway Extension product, uh, project. I only hope that all those manoeuvres have been satisfactory and someone will carefully check them later to make sure that everything actually works. Otherwise, I dread to think what will happen. Uh, you have a long task in front of you before you actually get to East Grinstead, I'm afraid, but I've no doubt that the start of this first stage will be a tremendous fillet to all concerned with the running of this railway. Speech is over and the special train returns to Horsted Station. Is this the first passenger train on this section? Meanwhile, there are plenty of other trains about. Class 4 tank has been renumbered to represent a replica train that closed the line 30 years ago. These engines were built in the early 1950s to be ours standard design. Some even worked on the Bluebell until withdrawal when they were sent to Barry Scrapyard.
There they stood until two of them went to the Bluebell. Since then, 80100 has been awaiting restoration at Sheffield Park. Meanwhile, 80064, masquerading as 80154, is with the replica train. A few weeks later, a start is made on the extension. Drain pipes are arriving by way of a new access road. Yard one wet weekend, the schools is about to have its bogey removed for overhaul. Now it's Bluebell on Parade weekend. Everything steamable will be running, and some trains will be double-headed. A firm favourite, Baxter. The school's bogey wheels have been turned and look very smart. Let's have a look at the parade.
The loco department have to deal with many types and sizes of engine on shed. The storage of spare parts is a problem too. It's not helped very much by visiting engines. Port line arrived late one night in June. It had been at the Woking Open Day and is on loan from the Swanage Railway until September. one of Mr Bullied's Merchant Navy class engines. Not since Blackmore Vale has there been such an engine in use. The footplate crew admire the engine getting ready for its first run. Thank <laughs> you. 
humble goods train reminds us of the less glamorous side of the railway business. We end this recording with sounds and scenes of Southern Steam in action as brilliantly performed by the Bluebell Railway.